Jesse. It's time to cook. And today I'm going to be doing it on camera so that there's no question as to exactly how it should be done. Now you're probably wondering, Mr. White, I already know how to cook. What's the point? Well, first of all, your assertion that you know how to cook is debatable. I mean, sure, you can create the product, but with the purity that our clients expect, not every time. And second of all, there's one key difference with this recipe. You see, this is not meth. It's candy, visually indistinguishable from our current output, but chemically divergent. So why candy? Well, not only is it legal, but candy appeals to people of all ages. You see, if we ever need something to fall back on, should our current operation cease to exist, candy is a good second choice if you ask me might not make the kind of profits we get from, say, people like Tuco or Crazy 8, but candy, at the end of the day, there's a certain simple, accessible joy to it, so I think it's a good option. So pay close attention, Jesse, and apply yourself. Whether you have a sweet tooth or not, I think this information might come in handy. So let's begin. First you want to gather tools for the job. A small baking sheet, a saucepan or a pot of some kind, aluminum foil, plastic wrap, a utensil to stir with, a pastry brush, A candy thermometer, some sort of blunt object, any kind will do really. A plastic ziplock bag, and an airtight container for storage. Next, round up all the necessary ingredients one quarter of a cup of water, one third of a cup of light corn syrup, one cup of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of clear flavoring extract, any flavor will do as long as it's clear, I've chosen vanilla, one drop of sky blue food coloring gel, and finally a can of nonstick cooking spray. Once you're sure you have everything, it's time for the most important step, washing your hands. Start by lining the baking sheet with aluminum foil, like so.
Once the sheet has been lined, spray the foil with the non-stick cooking spray. This will prevent the candy from sticking to the sheet. Now put the water corn syrup and granulated sugar in the saucepan. Begin cooking the mixture over medium-high heat. As the mixture heats up, stir it until all of the sugar dissolves. This may take some time, but you'll be able to tell when the sugar is dissolved as you'll no longer feel the grittiness of it at the bottom of the saucepan. Once the sugar has dissolved, stop stirring. When the mixture begins to boil, wet a pastry brush and brush down the sides of the saucepan. This will prevent the formation of sugar crystals on the sides. After brushing down the sides of the pan, allow the mixture to continue cooking. mixture to cool a little. As soon as the bubbles on the surface stop breaking, add the flavoring. Once the flavoring has been added, add one drop of the food coloring. Then stir it all together. stirring it all together, you want to pour the hot candy evenly across the baking sheet. If necessary, tilt the baking sheet side to side so that there's even coverage. the candy to cool and 
set for a little while. I'd recommend 45 minutes to an hour, but don't leave it exposed to the air for too long or it'll become sticky. Once the candy is set, it's time to break it apart. Cover the sheet of candy with plastic wrap. Then use a blunt object to crack it into several smaller pieces. Pieces are small enough to fit inside the plastic Ziploc bag. Put them inside of it and crush the candy into smaller pieces as desired. Finish by storing the candy in an airtight container. And there you have it. Rock candy that fits our brand without arousing any sort of suspicion. You might scoff at the smaller profits, but trust me, there's a certain satisfaction in making the candy. I think you'll find it appealing. Just don't go putting any of your chili powder in it. Anyway, you'd best get some rest. We've got work to do.